you're listening to the Academy podcast, the podcast for people who can but don't know how. This is where you get actionable steps to turn vague dreams into blissful realities. And I'm your host, Amoshala Victoria Wallaby. So let's get started. Okay, listen up, coaches or aspiring coaches. I know running an online business is hard work. Don't let the bullshit marketers tell you otherwise. Oop, did I just say that? I did. Because I just got a bone to pick with people who advertise running an online business as a walk in the park because it is not. And that is why I have created the Client Attraction Bundle for new coaches who are struggling with finding their ideal clients. And I have realized from my own experience that it boils down to number one, finding a red hot niche, a niche that is filled with people who are waiting to buy from you. The second thing is having that camera confidence to show up on video so that you can engage with your ideal clients. And the third thing is having authentic social media posts that connect with your ideal audience to foster that relationship. Those are the foundations for any successful online business. So this episode is sponsored by our very own Client Attraction Bundle. So click on the link below to go grab your own copy of the Client Attraction Bundle. And guess what? If you buy today, you will get one free hour of me in a group coaching session where I will personally help you implement. Because what use is it when we buy stuff and don't implement? This is only for action takers who are ready to start seeing some positive changes in their business. So head on, click on the link in the show notes and grab your own client attraction bundle. Welcome to another episode of the Academy podcast. On today's episode, I have the amazing Enna Eka. Thank you for coming on the show, Enna. Thank you for having me, Victoria. How are you doing today? I'm awesome. Before we started recording, I was telling you about how amazing you are when I see your posts. You've been connecting, helping a lot of people get results last year. And I also recently watched your video where you talked about, you know, setting goals for 2020. What are the things that you need to do to set those goals? Now, we're going to get into that a little bit. But before we do, can you please, in your own words, tell the listeners who Eno Eka is? Okie dokie. All right. So my name is Eno Eka. I'm an award-winning and globally recognized career coach, speaker, and mentor. Started my career in accounting. And um, after a while, I wanted something different, you know, something more exciting. I kind of found it, you know, monotonous and boring. So I decided to move into business analysis and project management. You know, started there, and that's what I've been doing for a couple of years now. So present, I'm a business analyst, change manager, and agile coach, principal consultant, and head coach at my company, any consultant here in Canada. And then in my free time, I teach business analysis at the University of Manitoba, as well volunteering you know, with other immigrant societies to help immigrants here who move to Canada to kickstart their careers in Canada. I also run a podcast as well, which is career focused. I run it with a friend of mine and we have that career talk with NYT podcast and a couple of other groups and online meetups that I post alongside a couple of other coaches I work with in my industry. Hmm. Yeah. Amazing. That's a little bit about me. <laughs> <laughs> That's an amazing bio. One I word. Go. Too yeah. Much, too much about, you know, achievements. <laughs> no, you, you, you worked for it, girl. You need to <laughs> flex on them. You worked hard to get where you are. So I'm totally up for flexing those achievements. Yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. So um, last year was really, really busy for me. I had a lot of engagements, uh, speaking engagements, speaking on various platforms relating to career transition and career progression, which a lot of immigrants suffer from when they move countries, Mm -hmm. um, culture change, and also due to the mindset and confidence issues that they have. So speaking on those areas, which I find are very pivotal in the success of an immigrant in this part of the world. And because of, you know, my engagement with the community, I won the award for 2019 award for mentorship 
from the Universal Women's Network here in Canada. I'm the first Nigerian to win this award. What? Um, also <laughs> That's <for> awesome. <laughs> Calgary Top 40 Under 40 here in Calgary, my local city. And then I was a nominee for the education category for the Forbes 30 Under 30 last year. So wow. pretty busy regarding, you know, awards and nominations. Feels good to be, you know, recognized for the things that you do. Mm -hmm. I was also recognized by the IIBA, which is the global body for business analysis. Okay. I was featured to share my story on the IIBA's platform, which I did. And, you know, hosting the business analysis online meetup for BAs around the world. Started my podcast with a friend of mine and the podcast has grown so much. Mm -hmm. um, we have listeners in over 15 countries right now. And in our first five episodes or so, we had 5,000 downloads. You know, the support has been amazing. And then because of everything that I've been doing, I decided to, you know, go further into career coaching and help more people. Mm -hmm. So last year, I launched my business analysis coaching program where we've been helping a lot of people, you know, kickstart their careers in business analysis, you know, take charge of their careers, you know, get jobs that compensate their values, compensate their experience and their skills. So I joined the IBA corporate program last year and then became an endorsed education provider for the IBA here in Canada and also an authorized training partner for Agile and Scrum Certification. So a little bit of what I did last year, but last year I decided to just hone into what I realized was my purpose and my purpose was really helping people see themselves in a different way, seeing themselves as part of a bigger picture and not just just not just Miss X or Mr. Y, mm. but in who are you? And I get people to actually see themselves in a different light and actually earn what they deserve in their careers. Wow, that's amazing. And congratulations on your accomplishments. Like you, it, it feels really good when you're recognized for the work that you do, especially when it comes from a place of passion oh, yeah. um, and that desire to really want to help people. Now you did mention agile coaching. If I'm going to be honest, I don't know what that is. And I'm pretty sure some people might not understand that term agile. I know what agility means, but when it comes to coaching, how, what is that? Okay. So because of the way projects are run now, projects are running in agile. So agile means that we're open to change. We're not predictive. We're adapting. We're adapting to the change in our industry, you know, in our processes, you know, in our people. Mm -hmm. And because of that, projects are run iteratively they are not planned and then carried out so i coach organizations and teams on how to adopt agile processes in building their products in developing new softwares in coaching their people in delivering services as well so that's what agile coaching is awesome awesome <laughs> there's something else because i'm also an immigrant i live i live in new zealand but originally from nigeria and you are so right on the money when you say a lot of migrants that come in actually yeah. do not know how to transition their careers or progress because they i don't know if it's if it's the i think maybe the environment or that change they kind of feel stuck for a while or feel insecure in chasing yes. after the careers that they have from what you have done and the people you have mentored what are some of the things that you have noticed that, that causes those, you know, career stagnation, so to speak? And how can they progress past that? Okay, first of all, I'd like to say that one of the things that affect people a lot is the mindset. So people just feel that because I moved to a new country, I can't start off as, you know, I was working as I was a manager in a big four consulting firm and I move here, I can't just get that done. The mm -hmm. mindset, you know, didn't have a mindset shift. And then confidence, they're not confident enough to actually speak to their experience, speak to their skills and their knowledge because they feel it's foreign. Because you, you were a manager in Deloitte in another country doesn't mean you can still come to Deloitte in New Zealand or in Canada and the US and still work, you mm -hmm. know, do the same, carry out the same job description, right? The same job duties. So the mindset and the confidence is there. And then, of course, other people's experiences also affect them. So there's a lot of people who, haven't been, haven't had such great experience, you know, immigrating and getting, you know, jobs. And then because of the stories that they hear, it kind of affects them in the sense that they're not sure if they could also make it, right? Mm -hmm. So it kind of affects their morale. So they lack the confidence, they lack the mindset. And then another thing is the skills too, because the truth is 
here, you need to learn the culture, you need to learn communication skills, you need to learn interview skills. All those things are different here. Even the resume style is different. Mm -hmm. So those things are the kind of things that affect people that move from another country to a new country, especially when the culture is so, so different. So learning all those things sometimes take a while for people to now transition fully. So through the coaching program, we help people understand how you can network effectively, Mm -hmm. how you can leverage your past experience and skills and knowledge to get to where you want to be. Amazing. I'm really interested in this topic because I also um, volunteer here in New Zealand as well on the board of the Migrant Committee. And basically, this is something that a lot of migrants struggle with. It's And you're yeah. so right. It's that self-confidence of, oh, you know, I'm suddenly in a new country. I can't just, you know, go into management. You're so right. And the problem is the same. I'm just really happy to hear it's not different in Canada. So it's, oh, it's not. Yeah, a problem that everybody um, struggles with. Okay, yeah. Eno, when you talked about how you pivoted from accounting into consulting and business analysis, you said something there that, you know, it was no longer exciting. And for me, I've experienced that definitely. And I've talked to a lot of people, even right now, who feel unexcited, stuck in their career. What were some of the things that you did? You know, when you started having that sense of dissatisfaction, what were some of the action steps that you took to actually make things happen? Okay, first of all, when I started having that feeling, I knew that I needed a change. So first of all, it's it's actually acknowledging that you need a change, right? Mm -hmm. So acknowledge that you need a change. Secondly, what I did was I had to find a mentor. So I had a career mentor, which is very important for everybody. I see everybody needs a mentor. You need someone to actually guide and coach you. Mm -hmm. Someone who's been through the same experiences can guide you and lead you aright. So I, I got a career mentor and I was like, hey, I have this problem. I'm not excited anymore. I have to share this with you. So, and then when my mentor spoke to me, like, okay, what else can you do aside from what you do? I mean, you're great at what you do now, but if you want to make a change and a transition, you need to ensure that it's something that you're going to enjoy, something that you're skilled in, that you'd be happy to wake up to every day. Hmm. And then we started looking at my core skills, you know, what makes me unique. So I asked people, what makes you unique, right? Mm -hmm. And I looked at the kind of skills I had and everything I had my communication skills, problem solving skills. I'm very analytical. You know, I like to solve problems. I'm like the go-to person when it comes to innovation and creativity. And then because I'd already been doing a bit of that where I currently worked, my mentor was like, great, you have these skills. Why don't you look at business analysis? You've been, you've been working in projects already. Mm. So how about you take up this career path? And then I did a bit of research. So researching also to ensure that you're a good fit for that role. Knowing what the requirements are, are there certifications you need to take, exams or courses you need to take? I did a lot of courses, a lot of, I took a lot of coaching as well, because Mm -hmm. moving from accounting into tech wasn't the easiest. But the truth is, because I had that drive, Mm -hmm. it was super easy for me. People keep saying, how do you do it? Well, I don't know. I just had the drive. And then I walked through leveraging my existing skills to move into this new career I wanted. And that's how I was able to make that transition. So I took the courses I needed to take and the exams I needed to write, and then I became certified in business analysis. So those are easy steps that anyone can take if you're looking to transition into a new career. Like this is, you're just giving me life right now, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> I see a lot of people get stuck and I tell them yeah. really, you do, you choose to stay stuck. That's, that's the truth. Because oh, yeah. first of all, like what you said, I'm just going to recap on what you said. You acknowledge the problem, the feeling you were having. You acknowledge oh, yeah. there's something I'm not, you know, there's, there's something missing from the way I should be feeling. Exactly. Two, you invested in yourself. You got a mentor, took online programs or, you know, courses and coaching just to help you because you need a guide because I always tell people because when I, when I teach um, classes on how to actually write your brand story, I tell people that you in the problem are the hero. You just need a guide to guide you to the right place because you already know what you want inside of you. But sometimes you just need that little help to pull it out. Yeah. And then another thing was you took inventory of your core skills. Some people say, I don't know what else to do. Hello, you do. <laughs> <laughs> If you you sit down with a pen and paper and go back your career life, there are other skills on the side that you may not even know are valuable that you have. I'm telling you, you, fantastic skills that people have, people I work with. Yeah. 
I mean, they say, well, I don't know. I don't think I, I, I do it. I've just worked in the bank for 10 years. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Let's start. And then when I give them some assignments to do and they have to walk through some worksheets, and it makes them start thinking about their experience. I'm like, oh my God, I actually did this. Mm-hmm. Wow. So you mean you did you did something this remarkable in your career and you say you, you're not valuable for anything? That's not true. We all have unique skills, very unique to us, mm-hmm. but that we can always leverage in so many ways. So, Absolutely. so many ways. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you need an external, external point of view. You need someone to actually see that to you, help you see that. And that's why having a coach or a mentor is fantastic for anybody at all. I still have a coach. I still have mentors. So (laughs) I totally agree. I do too. Because yeah, no matter how brilliant, even the most brilliant people still have coaches and mentors because somebody knows something you don't. And you're so right. Sometimes it takes an external eye to actually see that genius in you and help you call it out, you know? And then you also did research. This is where a lot of people struggle because they just don't want to sit down and do the work. You did research to actually find you know, what industries those skills would be profitable in. And you are so driven. I can attest to this, guys, because <laughs> I was just saying to her before the call, I don't know how she does it, and uh, manages to work, be a coach, consult, and still engage with her. I, I do clients on social media. I don't know how she does it, but yeah, she's amazing <laughs> like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Anna, this is this is so insightful and very interesting. Hey everybody, it's Amoshala here with a quick word from our sponsors. You see, when you decide to become an entrepreneur, one thing you do not realize you're signing up for is actually the amount of skills that you need to learn, especially if you're bootstrapping your business and trying to do a lot of things yourself. So things like building a website, social media marketing, photography, those are skills that you need when you are getting started as an entrepreneur. And that was what I was quick to realize when I started my business. But hey, Skillshare came to the rescue. With Skillshare, I was able to go there and take tutorials from people who have been exactly where I was, but are now experts in their field. So whether you're trying to build your website, trying to learn how to market your product on social media, or trying to improve on your communication and facilitation skills, Skillshare has got you. With Skillshare, you're able to learn new skills fast and effectively with step-by-step guided tutorials. And as a lovely listener, Skillshare has been kind enough to allow our listeners two months free of premium Skillshare. So to access two months free of premium Skillshare, click on the link below in the show notes. Now, I want to, you, you've talked about, you know, the, the pivotal moment where you decided to make the shift, the things you did to actually make that change happen. Now, I, I know starting out in business is not easy. Even, you know, doing all of those things, coaching people, mentoring people, it's not always a bed of roses. Can you share some of the biggest challenges you had in your career and how you've, you know, handled them and overcome them? So in my career as a business analyst or as a coach, right? In my I'll career. say generally, you know, as a, you know, in, uh, yeah, I'll say generally it could okay. different, yeah, different challenges that you may have encountered on your journey to, you know, get into this point of this, you know, recognition, accomplishment and, and everything. Okay. So the first thing is myself. I was my first challenge that I had to overcome. And why do I see myself? It was the fear, right? Mm -hmm. So I had this fear. I'm an introvert. I've always been that girl that, you know, she just wants to read her books and, you know, just get things done, never being out there like social media or being seen or heard. So the fear of visibility and being out there, stepping out of my comfort zone was the first challenge that I faced that I had to deal with Mm. you know so I've always been you know someone who I wouldn't talk unless you ask me a question you know I wouldn't start a conversation with a stranger I was so into myself but I knew that if I wanted to actually make my career to actually go higher than I wanted to be or reach the level where I want where I wanted to be I knew that I had to be more outgoing more social be a lot more sociable So I had to fight myself first, which is the fear of, you know, exchanging, you know, compliments with people, talking to people. I thought that myself, being visible as well, speaking up in meetings, you know, being known by senior executive in the company, being known by people in my community. I had to fight that. And then another thing I had to also fight was, you know, how people see me. 
Mm. So as a girl or as a woman, there's always this, there's always this notion that, you know, you shouldn't be too loud. You shouldn't be noticed. You have to be quiet and calm. And then you have to also seek validation from your parents or people that you look up to or your leaders or spiritual leaders or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But at a certain point, it seemed like I became a rebel because the truth is I started taking a lot of action myself without actually seeking validation from people. Mm. So I started actually being my own consultant and consult <laughs> myself and decide to make take decisions. For example, moving here, uh, moving to Canada was when I took all by myself. I didn't consult anyone because the truth is people would always tell you, oh, it's so hard to live abroad. People are washing plates. People are cleaning toilets. Mm. Uh, you know, people are driving taxes. It's not as easy as you think. It's so hard. But I actually had to tell myself, you know what, I'm going to do this and I'm going to get this done. When I wanted to also take my CVAP certification and transition to business analysis, it wasn't the most popular career path at that time. Mm. Even till now, people still ask, what is business analysis? Because it's not the most popular. And I had people tell me, you shouldn't really go into something that is really not in so much high demand right now. Mm. But I was actually looking at the future because I knew that in a couple of years, in four or five years, it's been a lot higher demand. Mm. If I was going to you know, listen to people and get validation from people, that would have actually stopped me from you know, going ahead to make this transition, going ahead to also moving here. And then now starting my business, I had a couple of challenges in which people who knew me, I expected their support and I didn't get any support from them. On the contrary, you know, they were unsupportive. They were saying, why do you even want to do this? Why do you want to start a business? Why, you, you know, you have a great successful career. Just focus on your career. I mean, you could, you know, become a VP or anything like that. Hmm. But, you know, I had to, would I say just become deaf to all that, all the negativity, mm -hmm. pushing the negativity and actually focus on my goal, my purpose. So those were a couple of challenges that I had to, I had to face and I had to fight. You know, being a woman in this industry is not the easiest at all. So fighting, being seen, to be seen, to be heard, to be noticed, I knew that if this is something I wanted to do, I just had to do it. So I stopped seeking validation from people, even, even from family, just deciding that this is what I wanted to do. And I just went ahead and did it. I, I was seen as a rebel, you know, as being stubborn, you know, moving mm -hmm. countries, changing career paths, deciding to, you know, start a business, even when my career is still very successful. However, I always told myself, I am my own competition. Nobody mm -hmm. else is my competition. So I had to fight all these things myself. So these are a couple of things I've had to go through. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if anyone can relate with it, but these are the things I personally had to take on. <laughs> like if you could feel my skin right now, I'm having goosebumps, <laughs> especially when you said you didn't have the support. I don't know what it is. Like same, I wasn't, ex I'm, I won't say I was because I'm still in that boat <laughs> and it blows my mind. Like, oh, yeah. for example, if I post on Facebook, for example, and it's a post about myself or my family, I'll get a ton of engagements. Like people will come up from wherever they've been hiding and like, 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 like. But the moment I talk about my business, yeah. it's dead quiet. Like nobody will say a word about like, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, what's going on here? Is it that people don't really support your business? And that's it. Let's even leave Facebook. Even in my own family, like my immediate family, like my brother, yeah. even or my, you know, people don't understand what it is you're trying to do. Yes. And like you, I had to be deaf. Like I had to be a rebel to say, you know what? I'm staying in my zone, in my lane. I kind of toned, like tuned everybody out. Oh, yeah. I just decided to focus on myself. So you're not alone. Definitely not alone. And yeah. I've heard this from the couple of interviews that I've done. I've heard the same sentiment being uttered. Your friends and family may not support your business. That's fine. There are strangers who think you're amazing. You know? That's true. Yeah. That's yeah. True. Get more support from strangers than family in the beginning. And when I, when I read the biographies of a lot of you know, successful business people, hmm. I find it very common very very common they wouldn't understand mm -hmm. you know, when you first start up so like I was, I personally was stuck for years because I was waiting for their approval, you know, waiting wow. for their validation. Oh, can you tell me I'm doing the right thing? You know, wow. does this make sense? You know, and because I wasn't getting it, I thought I was doing the wrong thing. So I stayed stuck. I just, okay, maybe I should just stick to my job after, you know, I have a good job as well. But that was not what my heart wanted. You know what I mean? Like I wanted more. 
I'm, I just said one day, you know what? I'm done waiting for these people's validation. I'm just going to go out there and get what, when I get it, they will see what I'm trying to do, you know? <laughs> so that, that's so amazing that you shared that. I'm sure you've delivered a lot of people today. From... <laughs> <laughs> yes, please go out there and just do. Yeah. So something that I, I do, Vic, and it's something that I love everybody else to do is whenever I want to make a decision, I don't sleep over it. So I used to be this person that would sleep over a decision. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then the next morning I won't do it anymore. I'll be so pumped up. I'm like, you know what? I'll sleep over it, think about it. And then, and then the next day, you know, all the negative thoughts come in and then I share and, I'm, and I ask a friend or a family member, what do you think? And they tell me all sorts of negative things. Mm-hmm. And then I don't go ahead with it. Talking about New Zealand, I was going to move to New Zealand years after, years ago, after my bachelor's and I didn't. Why? Mm-hmm. Because I got scholarships to move to some countries in Europe, New Zealand, Finland, Switzerland. But I got a lot of negative feedback and then I didn't go further with any of those. So what I have done recently is when it comes to decision making, I take decisions on the spot. Yeah. So if, my, if my mind says do it, I do it. If I have to make a payment, I have to pay for something, I just, I just bring out my credit card and do it. Mm. And it has helped me so much not having to sleep over things and think about it over and over again. Now I'm so decisive when it comes to decision making. I don't sleep over anything. I don't talk. I don't discuss it with anybody. If it's something I feel like I know I want to get it done, I just get it done. I think that one, number one skill, the ability to decide fast. Yes. Is one thing that sets successful entrepreneurs apart from the ones oh, that yeah. don't succeed. And I had to learn that the hard way because I was exactly like you, you know, I'll think about it, you know. And for me, I had to dig deep to say, okay, why do you want to think about it and get all the opinions of everyone's mom and their cats before you do it? <laughs> because the truth is, I personally was not ready. That's the truth. Yeah. So yeah. I was looking for all those other external validation to kind of ma- help me rationalize why it's not yeah. a good idea. But I, yeah, so I, I have to say to myself, you know, in order for me to be successful and see results, I have to be an action taker. So even if I take that decision and it's not the best, it's okay. It's a learning curve. You the know, learning, I'll learn. Yeah. I feel forward. Yeah. I feel, I feel forward. That's it. If I feel, I feel forward. I, yeah. I'm not taking back what I've learned from my mistakes and I move on. Dust it up and move on. I don't have to go cry to anybody. I cry Absolutely. to myself and I move on. <laughs> yeah. Wear my your pants and move on. Really, that's it. <laughs> it's true. I totally agree. I totally agree with you. Oh my God, this is so good, Anna. Thank you for being our deliverer today. <laughs> okay. Now, I just want you to please, I know you've shared a lot of action steps, you know, you're good yeah. like that. But just to wrap it up, to help people take it home, you know, sure. and, and, you know, keep it under their pillow so that they can constantly dream of it. What yeah. are five actionable steps that somebody can take? today, you know, someone who's been where you've been struggling with that mindset issue, waiting for external validation, does not know if they have additional skills that they can leverage. They feel stuck in their careers, but they can't seem to move forward. What are some actionable steps that you can give them, just five, to help them move? Okay, I'll try to stick to five. There's a lot of <laughs> Share more. <laughs> share more if you can. <laughs> you know, if I've learned along the way, you know, and then I share with people, you know, that work with me is one decide once you decide take action second thing is take action don't waste any time there are a lot of decisions that you know if you had taken action and you look back at, on your life and you're like if i took action at that time you know i would have you know 10x my business i would have you know come you know this i would have you know become maybe a director a vp or started my own business or whatever it could be in any area of your life mm-hmm. once you decide take action don't sleep over it. Take action today, that same day. Okay? Mm-hmm. Once you take action, get someone, learn from the best. That's something I constantly do and I advise people to do. Learn from the best. Who is the best person in this industry? Who's the best person in this business? Learn from the best. Mm-hmm. Four is mindset. You need to have the right mindset. Mindset as regards positivity. Stay positive. Fill your heart and your mind with positivity. You know, if there is anybody that you look up to that gives you positivity in their podcast, you know, YouTube, wherever, go get that positivity. Practice daily gratitude. Have a vision. So vision and visualization is also something that I do. I've always, when I, whenever I want to get something done, 
I write it down and I keep saying it. I tell everybody, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Like, how are you going to do it? I don't know, but I'm going to do it. I have that vision. I speak to it. I speak it out there. I just say it. I'm going to do this. Hmm. And I do it. I don't know how it happens, but because I keep saying it and I visualize it happening, it just happens because the truth is every day I'm doing something that's moving me closer to where I want to be because my mind is set on achieving that goal. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Another thing that I do that I would also love other people to do is have surround yourself with positivity, surround yourself with a community of people who are like-minded, just like you, you know? So a lot of times we want, we want to surround ourselves with our family and friends because these are the people we're used to, but sometimes you need to step out of your comfort zone and actually hang out with the people who are in the same situation like you. So if you're an entrepreneur and you're just starting off, you know, find where these people hang out and go hang out with them. You know, it could be groups, it could be communities and learn from them. Just being in their situation, being in that situation where you're with those people, you're learning from them, you're learning of their vibes because there's a lot of positivity in that air compared to when you're hanging with your friends that know you and they feel like you can't even, you tell them, oh, I'm going to be a six-figure coach. They're like, yeah, right. You know, mm. but when you're hanging out with the six-figure coaches already, six-figure entrepreneurs already, you're learning from them. You're already in that circle. Yeah. So if you need to change your circle, please do. And this is something I did that has helped me so much. Okay. And another thing I would really like to share as you guys actionable steps is focus. So focus is something that's so key. I tell people, I said, if you, if you want to achieve success, success doesn't come easy. It comes with a lot of sacrifices. Right. So you need to be able to sacrifice your time, block your calendar. If you need to start talking to your ideal clients, you need to start preparing for an exam or, or taking a course, whatever it is you need to do, you need to focus, you know, cut off the fluff, you know, TV and movies and, you know, all that and social activities they can wait, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about your career or your business, you need to move the needle every day. Every day, what am I doing that's making progress in my business, in my career? What am I doing every day? There's never a day that I'm not learning something new. I block my calendar to study, to read, to do anything for my business, for my career. There's always every day that I know I have a winning activity, an activity that helps me win. You know, so focus is so important. And when we're able to actually do this, focus on what's important. That's one of my mantras, focus on what's important. If it's not important, I don't pay attention to it. Mm-hmm. I just don't. So once, once you're able to do all that, trust me, the sky is your limit. In fact, beyond the skies. Wow. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, talking about focus, I was watching a TED Talk by Kobam Zatsuko. I don't know if you know him. I know Kobam. Um, Co- yeah. yeah, yeah. I was watching a TED talk by him yesterday and he was just talking about the power of being blind. And one thing that just stood out for me in that talk was the power of focus. Sometimes this our eyes can be a distraction oh, yeah. <laughs> because he was talking about how, you know, the analogy he gave was he walked into a shop with his wife to buy something. They were only going there to buy water, for example. And she picked up water. Next thing she was picking up this item, that item, that item. And he just understood that, okay, sometimes this, your eyes can be a distraction. And I could just relate it back to being able to focus. Sometimes we get distracted with things that are not important on our way to, you know, the goals that we see in front of us. So yeah, I I agree with you. Focus is absolutely, I think, the the most important actually. And and, then mindset. Yeah, Okay, And that's why the best question to ask anybody, whenever somebody reaches out to me and says, oh, so I from X to Y, I ask them, why do you want to do it? What's your why? Right? So Mm -hmm. whenever I want to do something, I ask myself, why am I doing this? How is it going to benefit me? And then when I can't provide an answer, I say, this is not going to benefit me anyway. I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, if I get invited to a social gathering, I'm like, why do I need to be there? What am I going to gain by attending this event or going to this place or doing this activity? What's the need for me? There's nothing in it for me. Why am I doing it? Is, it? is it going to benefit me? Is it going to help me grow? Am I going to build a network when I get there, leverage the network? That Why am I joining this, act- this activity? Why am I doing this? When I ask myself why, I just know that, okay, you can't do this and not, you know, mm-hmm. decline that, decline that invitation. No, close that, close that movie. Close mm-hmm. your Netflix. You have time blocked out for this. Mm-hmm. You need to focus on your why. You know, once you be able to do that, 
you know, it kind of helps you streamline the kind of things you do, cut off all the fluff and just focus on the main thing. Keep the main thing the main thing, really. I agree. I agree. I couldn't agree more. No, you know, you you have a lot of things to share. I see how you you post, you know, daily, you know, wins about the people you are helping and the lives you're impacting, which is amazing. If yeah. somebody wants to learn more from you, where can they find you? Okay, for sure. So they can find me on LinkedIn. My LinkedIn is Eno Eka. Facebook Eno Eka as well. My email is Eno at enoeka.com. I'm open to, you know, chatting with people, you know, who need help with their careers and, you know, trying to focus on what, on what their main goal is, setting goals to achieve mm. their career goals as well. I help people start business analysis careers, um, so people who want to start transition. And mm. I don't just work with anybody. I work with professionals who are high performers, mm. but they're feeling stuck, they're bored, and they don't know how to get to where they want to be. So I help them achieve that. Right. Awesome. Thank you so much for welcome, coming babe. on the show. I know it's been a while we've been trying to do this, but I understand you're a busy woman. So thank you so much for coming on. I thank really appreciate it. <laughs> Lovely. Awesome. Thank you, Anna. All right. Bye. Bye. So there you have it. Thank you so much for listening. And for more content like this, follow us on our social media handles. On Facebook, it's at iCandemy, the Facebook page. On Instagram, it's at iCandemy. Or come say hello over on my personal page. On Instagram, it's at Omoshola Speaks. On Facebook, it's Victoria Wallaby. Feel free to reach out, introduce yourself, say hello. I love meeting you. And if you have any stories that you feel will inspire another woman to action, I want to hear from you. I really do. I love hearing from you send me an email to hello at icandemy.org. So it's hello at I-C-A-N-D-E-M-Y dot O-R-G. And if you find this content valuable, please rate and review on iTunes. Leave a review. It matters to us so that people can find it. So like, rate and review on iTunes, on Google Podcasts and everywhere you listen to your podcast. Thank you.